You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Today on part two of our Cabral house call, we're going to be going through, it's like 10 more questions. So really, we had our record show yesterday. We got it done in 28 minutes, so pretty happy about that. My goal was 20 minutes. I obviously went over that. I never know exactly how long it's going to take to answer your questions, but I would never shortchange anyone. So I'm going to set that challenge again. Can I get it done in 20 minutes today? I'll do my best, and really, we're ready to get started. So a lot of great questions. Thank you once again for tuning back in. I do really look forward to answering your questions and um, we're going to have another great show. So let's get started. Lisa is first today. She writes in, Hi, Dr. Rawl. Thank you so much for answering my questions on your podcast. You are one of a kind, and we are blessed by your time and knowledge you put into your podcast. Thank you, Lisa. My question is, for years, when I lay down, I would suddenly hear noises. For me, it was rock and roll music. I could hear words, and it was always the same song. I personally have never listened to rock and roll before, and I'm pretty confident the song I heard was never an actual song on a radio before. It used to drive me crazy, and again, it was only when I lied down. This lasted for eight years, but it suddenly stopped. My nine-year-old daughter has the same problem, but for her, it's not music, but rather it's just beeping, clicking noises she hears when she's lying down. I feel bad for her because it truly bothers her. Have you ever come across anyone who hears noises when lying down? And do you know the root problem? You may need to know that my daughter did have a history of Tourette's and OCD. However, since she has been on a special diet and healthy gut supplements, she no longer has those problems. Thank you so much, Lisa. Okay, so this would be one of those questions where if I said to you, have I worked with people with this condition? The answer would be yes. But I also want to know that I don't want to lie and say that I know an underlying root cause to this. No one really does. However, we know things that it could be, right? Because it could be different for different people. One is simply with a a kind of background with Tourette's. I actually really answered this question yesterday. We need to make sure that we're cutting down on all stimulants, all caffeine, all food dyes, all high sugars, all processed foods, all artificial sweeteners. And I know that you did that and it's already helped your daughter. So that's one thing that I have seen work. Another is actual fluid in the air. So people with nasal-based congestion, we have a great ENT protocol of kind of cleaning out those sinuses. People who have taken antibiotics before can get a little bit of yeast overgrowth, a candida overgrowth, a nasal passages, fungal overgrowth, bacterial overgrowth. Neti pot works great for that with a little bit of a saline solution. Sometimes just a little drop of GSE works great in there. Also, some people have used one drop of 3% food grade hydrogen peroxide, one drop in each year, just for three or four days maximum. And what that has done was killed any bacteria actually in the eardrum or a lot of times dry up some of the fluid in the ear, which can, again, what can it cause? Well, it can cause this kind of dampening of sound and then maybe whatever's playing in the subconscious could actually come out. That's what you hear for noises specifically. But a lot of times this is that stress-based, that um, higher exacerbated fight or flight And people can hear their heartbeat, they can hear noises, they can hear beeping, they can hear clicking, they're just more hypersensitive. Highly recommend the deep sleep protocol before bed, or at least the magnesium citrate, which I've mentioned before, works fantastically well. That's your best place to start, Lisa. Hopefully that gets you started. Okay, Karen is up next. I heard about your podcast at a Weight Watchers meeting two months ago. And I've been listening ever since. Thank you for sharing your wealth of knowledge and especially your Monday mindset thoughts. I'm 53 and recently saw a cardiologist. 
So what I'm going to do today is I'm not going to be able to read the whole question, but I'm going to give you the cliff notes and then I'm going to answer the person's question. And as I said yesterday, you can just go to stephencabral.com forward slash and that podcast page. And in that, in today's case, it's four, four, three. So just go to stephencabral.com forward slash four, forty three, and you'll actually be able to see everyone's question in depth. Okay. So her cardiologist, and she just has a background. Both parents died of heart disease at 60 and 61. And her sister is 54, had a major stroke. So she's just worried about diabetes and everything that's going on. So her BP is good. Uh, this is Karen. Glucose is 82. Cholesterol, total cholesterol is 184. But the ratios are out of sorts with higher triglycerides and HDL. The main question is her LDL P, so just particle size is elevated. Is there any way of naturally lowering it? So What I'd like to talk about right now is that your overall cholesterol is good. Your triglycerides are a little high. Well, that tells me just basically two main things. When triglycerides are high, well, keep in mind, this is independent necessarily of cholesterol. Typically, it is from fructose or processed sugars or grains. For some people, it just affects them more. So wine, alcohol, removing that from your diet, at least temporarily, try it for six weeks. Can you do that? Get your blood tested. Are your triglycerides back down? Well, it shows you you don't process alcohol very well and the sugar there. Same with fructans. Try to cut out the processed food as much as you can. That will raise triglycerides. And also when HDL is high, it depends on how high. I don't have your blood work in front of me. I do lab reviews all the time. And if your HDL is really above 80, a lot of doctors will say, that's fantastic. You have a lot of good cholesterol. I say not so fast. Why would someone have so much good cholesterol? Well, the reason is HDL acts as an antioxidant type of Cholesterol, meaning like it's a protective type. Well, why would you have that high? A lot of people with inflammation in the brain as well as the body as well as the arteries produce more HDL. It's the body's protective mechanism. So we need to lower overall inflammation. My recommendation, Karen, is to run the omega-3 test that we have on the website. Check out your levels of omega-3. That will help you customize an omega-3 program for you, bring down those higher levels of inflammation. That will help. You can run a genetics test that will certainly show you the best diet for you. And also, you could be someone who needs more vitamin E, the mixed toco trienols and tocopherol, especially D-alpha tocopherol in their diet. And your genetics will show you that as well. So again, there's remember, there's an answer for everything. You just need to keep going deeper, looking deeper. It doesn't sound like maybe your doctor is a functional medicine cardiologist uh, or a functional medicine doctor. But again, there's different levels of that, right? But if you find a good functional medicine doctor, they could customize a program for you. And, and really, I mean, you don't have to have that same fate of heart disease and stroke, uh, but you have to start working on it right now. Okay. Norman is up next. Doctor, I have cervical spondylosis and a kidney problem. Can you help me cure or prevent this health problem of mine? Thank you very much and more power. Okay. So let's answer Norman's question. Okay. So Norman, let's first talk about what is cervical spondylosis. And it's essentially a reduction in the space between the discs. And in Norman's case, the discs in the neck, the cervical. Okay. So the cervical spine is your neck. And what we're looking at are a reduction of space causing pain essentially in his neck that could be degenerative or can actually be from an accident, like an injury. So you can look at it in two different ways. So my first thing is we need to make sure that you see a really good well-rounded chiropractor, not to do adjustments on your neck, but really to look at the biomechanical alignment. That's so important because if your neck isn't aligned, and again, you're not just going to go in for adjustments. What you're going to do is open up the SCM muscles. Those are the muscles in the front of the neck. You're going to pull back the kyphotic or rounded shoulders. You're going to work on your posture. You're going to work on your core. So everything just sits in alignment. Because remember, cervical spondylosis will get worse if you're leaning forward, looking at a computer screen all day, commuting in a car. You need to pull your chin back so that your ears actually sit over your shoulders. That's good posture. That's good alignment. That will already help with further degeneration. And then I'm not sure if you tuned in, Norman, last week, but on, let's see if it was the Friday review. No, it was this Tuesday. So episode 438, that was um, a great pain reliever I recommended, a really great one. And so you want to check out that show in the show notes. That's on page 438. 
Devil's Claw as well as uh, Bromelin or Boswellia, I should say. Really great for some of these pain-based and osteo-based issues. Highly recommend giving that product a shot. Kidney problems are a little different because it could be from so many different things. You know, why the kidney problems is your... Are you breaking down too much protein actually from your cells? What are your LDH levels on your actual blood work, your lactose dehydrogenase? Is your gut spilling out proteins from digestion? So what's going on in terms of albumin levels, bun levels? So again, there's so much to look at. It's hard for me just to say, okay, we'll do this for your kidneys. I can tell you that drinking ginger tea does help a lot of people with kidney-based issues dandelion being one of those as well that's good for cleansing the kidneys. So it's at least a place to start. Hopefully that helps Norman to get you started. Cherry or Seri is up next. Hi, Dr. Ball. I recently started following you on Instagram and I've been listening to your podcast ever since. They're hugely informative and helpful. Thank you for sharing and passing your knowledge on to others. I've been having gut issues and diarrhea for the past 20 years. I've spent multiple trips to the doctor, only being told I have IBS they recently found a parasite called Diatomoeba fragilis. This is something that I've worked with many times, sorry, so we'll talk about that. GI wants to put me on a 10-day course of antibiotics. Heard mixed results about that. On a pretty good diet right now. This has helped my gut issues, but obviously it's not fully resolved. Okay, so what do you recommend in your experience? All right, so you, are, you don't need to do the stool test because you already know you have a parasite. Well, here's the thing. We have a great parasite-based protocol. It's a natural health-based protocol. It's something that I've studied for many years. I've tweaked this over the years. This is the one that I like the best. I get the, great, I get the best results with it. So what you do is you follow a parasite-based protocol for 42 days. Why 42 days? Well, they've shown in natural medicine that the life cycle it seems to be of a parasite, not for all of them, is about 21 days. But then they lay eggs. I know it, doesn't, it sounds kind of gross, but they're laying eggs in your intestines and then those have to be wiped out as well. So we found the 42-day or the six-week parasite protocol to be the best, and we use a combination protocol, so we use everything from the black walnut to um, all sorts of other great natural-based treatments in there, cloves and you know things, again, that have been used for thousands of years to wipe out parasites. So now that's what I would recommend, and then using the Clean Gut Probiotic as the probiotic after that, and of course, using the Healthy Gut Support to seal up that gut wall. Now, if you go the antibiotic route, fine. That's your choice. That's your prerogative. And then after that, just simply use our gut rebuilding protocol. So that's it. I mean, literally, that, that's all you have to do. One of those two options, the natural parasite-based protocol, and then the healthy gut support, the gut rebuilding protocol, or the antibiotics, and then the gut rebuilding protocol. And then obviously keep going with the healthy foods. And lastly, with our parasite protocol, we also give you the top natural foods to help wipe out parasites on your own, such as garlic before bed, crushed pumpkin seeds are absolutely fantastic, things like that. Okay. Anonymous is up next. Anonymous is asking, Hi, Dr. Brawl. I've been listening since last year and I've learned so much along the way, so thank you. I've been a nutritional health coach for a while and realized that this has been fun because people themselves want to become healthier. I'm struggling with the people closest to me. For example, I had a friend on antibiotics for headaches, another with gut issues, a cousin with sinus issues, and only after she's been fed multiple bottles of cow's milk. I never say anything because it's not my place, but also because no one likes to be a know-it-all. It just kills me because I want them to be happy and I feel like they could benefit from alternative options. I was curious to see what you do in these types of situations. Thank you in advance. All right, Anonymous, uh, appreciate you writing in. This is the bane of my existence. I went back for my doctoral degree in naturopathic medicine to help heal myself, to get the answers I needed, then to be able to help heal my parents with autoimmune-based diseases, then be able to help those closest to me, and then be able to help you know the world uh, as best as I can. Obviously, that's a, that's a big mission. So we'll put it this way. I have a difficult time, just like every other human being, getting my own family or parents to listen to what I have to say. And there's a very good reason for that. I will always be their son and their child, and I will always be my brother's brother and my sister's brother, meaning like... You grew up with these people. They see you in a different light. It doesn't matter that I've been given, you know, this certification and award and designation and have a 
you know, sold out practice and any of these things, it doesn't matter. Like they, it just, they're like, when I mentioned something to them, like, Oh yeah, that sounds interesting. You know? And I just like laugh because I'm like, this is what I help people with every single day. Like it's, I mean, we, I have translators work with me to help people who could see anyone in the world. These are millionaires, billionaires, overseas in the Middle East. I work with people literally in every different time zone. But yet when I try to give my parents advice, they're like, oh, you know, I don't I don't know if that makes sense. And I'm like, I don't know how else to say. Now, I kind of half joking because they have. They've done such a phenomenal job over the years that really their issues with their autoimmune based diseases are gone. So they're doing a great job. It's just I want the best for my parents. I want to give back as much as I can. I mean, I want my parents, my family to be as healthy as they can possibly be. So I'm in the same boat as you. I mean, what can I give you for a recommendation? It's simply that that you just, when they open up, all you can do is just give some tips here and there. Uh, but it's, it's very, very difficult. And a lot of times what I'm trying to do is just, I wait for them to open to it and then I just give them that next piece. And then I have them run a lab test and then I'll review their lab test with them and just show them the data. That seems to help the most is like, okay, look on this organic acid test, on this hair tissue mineral analysis, on your blood work, look, it shows that this is what you need to be doing. And then they're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Cause it's not you telling me it's the lab telling me. So that's kind of the breakthroughs that I've had uh, finally with my parents and definitely with family. But again, a lot of times the best thing to do is honestly write the program for them that you want and then have them meet with another practitioner. You can even pay for it and have that practitioner that you're friends with implement the program. I've done that as well. You know, honestly, I've, I've just have them meet with a health coach before, friends, family, uh, wrote up the program and have them implement it. That's gone well as well. Because, you know, I'm, I'm intense sometimes. And so that goes for everyone. And I just want people to get well. And I know how to help them get well. So when they're not following it or they're not buying into it or they're not believing or whatever it is, I'm just saying like, this is it. This is the answer you've been looking for. You don't need to search any longer. Just do this. And when they don't do it, I, I just, it frustrates me. Not from, not, it has nothing to do with me. It has to say like, you're struggling right now. I want to help you. Please let me help you. And sometimes they don't. And of course, just like you, like any health coach, I'm a health coach and we get frustrated. Okay. So hopefully that helps. Angie is up next. She says, hi, Dr. Brawl. I check my basal body temperature every day and it has been very low for years. 96.8. This is basically Angie's body temperature. And I have a hard time raising it even throughout the day. I've had a full panel for my thyroid and it came back fine, even though I struggle with many low thyroid symptoms. How can I raise my temperature and help my thyroid work properly? Thanks again for all your help today and always. Okay. So Angie, this is something that we talk about a lot in functional medicine at conferences. And what we're looking at is this low body temperature is not just thyroid. You have to think of this as metabolism in general. Thyroid has not cornered the market on your metabolism. It has a huge amount to do with it. And also there's a big difference between functional levels of thyroid, which shows up in your blood work and how your thyroid is actually functioning. So if you haven't run reverse T3, meaning like you've done a full panel, but not reverse T3, running reverse T3 can sometimes show you they're actually converting a lot of that thyroid to unusable thyroid in terms of reverse T3. So try to run that. The second is that most people with this low body temperature, the basal body temp, have cold hands and feet, really a big sign of sympathetic nervous system dominance. You can run a hormone test showing your cortisol levels. Sometimes those can be through the roof or you can simply be burnt out. Your hair tissue mineral analysis will show you that as well. So what we do is we do an actual adrenal support-based protocol. We also do put you on thyroid support, even though your blood work may be fine. We're not going to, remember, we're not using drugs. We're using natural-based products. So We have a great thyroid-based product called Daily Thyroid Support. It's not on the website. I know we need to get more of our products up there for people. But if you email into our office, it's um, support at drballdetox.com or just support at stephencabal.com. We will get you set up with a bottle of that. That helps people. It really does. It's food-based support. It's mineral-based support. It feeds your thyroid. It works fantastically well. And also, we need to cut down on stress. Start to get into it more of hatha yoga, more of meditation, more of relaxation-based therapy. You can use great products like Adrenal Response Complete Care, HPA Adapt, 
adapt to calm down the sympathetic nervous system. You can use magnesium glycinate throughout the day, but really work on that sympathetic nervous system coach. If you want help with that, run an adrenal panel through us or run a hair tissue mineral analysis panel through us. You'll get my recommendations and you work with one of my health coaches and we'll get you definitely set up with help on that. Okay. Hopefully that helps and gets you started. Isabel is up next. Hi, thanks for everything that you do. You guys are great. Do you have any recommendations for healing panic attacks yourself and general anxiety for having another panic attack? Or do you consider the best or therapy the best way to treat it? Okay, so the issue is this, that panic attacks and anxiety are symptoms. They are not root causes. And yes, these can absolutely be healed no matter who you are. We work with anxiety, panic attacks all of the time. They are one and the same. Panic attacks are a higher level of anxiety, and oftentimes it is situational. But very, very important, and I feel like I just answered this question last week, but if I did, I'm answering it again, and that's okay. So here's the big thing is that what we often have, and you can see this on a hair tissue mineral analysis, is a heightened sympathetic nervous system response. I actually just answered this obviously in the last question, but it applies differently. Remember, our symptoms differ based on our genetics, But what goes wrong in our body, because we only have so many homeostatic systems, as they're called, when those imbalances go wrong, meaning like we have a higher fight or flight, higher levels of cortisol that gets the heart racing, that floods the blood with adrenaline, that floods the blood with cortisol. We get constrictions of the arteries. The heart speeds up. Our body gets signals of stress. That's anxiety. That is anxiety. That leads to panic attacks. What works well for panic attacks? A product called Cortisol Manager. Again, adrenal response complete care using two to three capsules of magnesium glycinate at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Using the deep sleep protocol before bed, which has a little bit of 5-hydroxytryptophan. Again, you can't use that if you're on an antidepressant or don't use that if you're on any clonopin or anything like that. You can just use the magnesium citrate. There's a lot of great things that you could do. Same thing as last question. If you want specific help on this, what you're going to want to do, because again, it can run deeper. It can have gut-based issues. And the gut-based issues, again, inflammation in the gut. It sends signals from your vagus nerve or your gut from through your vagus nerve to your brain saying, hey, we have inflammation down there. Something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong. That causes anxiety. Uh, there's a lot of different reasons. You can run an organic acid test if you have bloating, digestive-based issues. You can run an adrenal panel if you get the the fast-paced heart rate, if you want to see what your adrenal levels are, your cortisol levels are, if you want to see your overall sympathetic nervous system as well as your mineral levels, or if you have high levels of copper, that's shown on a hair tissue mineral analysis. Also, high levels of mercury or aluminum. Again, hair tissue mineral analysis sounds like it might be the best bet for you. Food sensitivities. Again, food sensitivities would be a great one for you to run. Food sensitivities cause anxiety. Bottom line, they can absolutely speed up heart rate. We know that. That's an IgE-based reaction. And also IgG is a longer-term reaction. So it's about a lot of things to look at, but that's how natural health works. You want a bottom line thing. You need to explore what the issue is. But I just want you to know that anxiety, panic attacks, is something that you absolutely do not have to live with, nor should you live with it. Okay. Lisa is up next. Hi, Dr. Ball. And this is the last question today. I listen to all of your podcasts and you truly amaze me with your knowledge. I have a question for a friend who is desperate to help their daughter. Three years ago, their daughter had a soccer injury in the ankle. Her ankle is healed. Something happened to her body and she has pain everywhere. She has complex regional pain syndrome, formerly called RSD. Can you help guide us to the root problem? And I'll pass on your podcast to the family. The doctors currently have tried everything and have no more ideas of how to help her. Thank you again for being such a blessing to so many people. May God bless you and your family. Lisa, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. And the same to you. So let's, let's answer this question for you and your friend. Okay, so complex regional pain syndrome, as well as its former name, which was called reflex sympathetic dystrophy, we already gave you an indicator, right? Sympathetic. What have we talked about before? Sympathetic nervous system dominance. Now, that's not exactly the same because we're not saying that she has a stress-based issue. What we're saying is that there is some type of, and again, we know this is, um, conventional medicine knows the same exact thing. This is a a peripheral nervous system issue. So sometimes when there's an an injury, even if it's bone-based, muscle-based, tendon-based, ligament-based, you know, whatever-based, is that the actual nervous system can get damaged in a way 
where it's turned on and almost burned in a pattern of heightened nervous system activity or, or pain, pain signals. So there's a couple things that actually work really well for people. And so I'd like to give you some of those today. Again, I know that you asked this question a few weeks ago and we're just getting to it now, but our, I don't know how old the daughter is. So my thing is if she's over, let's say 12 years old or so, she could certainly try. Again, it's always the parent's decision when it comes to children. I'm merely giving suggestions those pain relievers that I spoke about on episode 438. So that's one place to start. Okay, another place to start, castor oil packs. Now, I spoke about this many, pod, well, it seems to me always like many podcasts ago, but it hasn't been that long ago. You'll just have to go back in the podcast and look up the castor oil packs. I'm having just trouble locating it right now, but I'm typing it in as we speak, and I will hopefully be able to find it for you. Okay, castor oil uses and packs for 24. Now, we can use it directly on the leg uh, where we're having these pain-based issues. Okay, next up, magnesium. Magnesium dosages are going to be slightly smaller for a child. It could be one capsule of magnesium glycinate at each meal throughout the day. We can also use magnesium citrate before bed. We've talked to a lot about magnesium. Sometimes that just happens. Magnesium calms the sympathetic nervous system. How will you know if you take too much magnesium? You will get diarrhea or lose stool. That's how it works. So we'll start a smaller dosage. We will work up for a child. What else can we talk about it to with this? We're not going to use anything to decrease cortisol levels. We're just always obviously going to make sure that we do not have any issues in terms of food sensitivities, that we do not have any food dyes in the diet, that we do not have sugar, that we did not have any caffeine. I shouldn't have to say no caffeine for kids, but we're getting this insane spike in media. We're saying that caffeine can actually be okay for kids, like coffee for kids. I'm going to really go on a rant one day about that. Really, people without a science-based background or medical-based background talking about giving caffeine and and, uh, coffee to kids, it's very harmful. Please be very careful with what you listen to in terms of advice, especially from so-called biohackers. It's very disturbing. And I don't like to call anybody out, nor will I, but just be careful. Be very, very careful. Even if a child benefits from caffeine, it doesn't mean it's good in the long term. It simply means that that child had some type of issue where they needed a stimulant. Could we do it naturally? Yes, because we'll find out what the breaks are on that child that's holding them back. But I digress. So let's get back into the answer. We're talking about castor oil packs. We're talking about magnesium. We're talking about using a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Help some people, hurt some people. That's actually a good indicator. If you take apple cider vinegar and it hurts, we could have an issue buffering acids. Very interesting. So one tablespoon in about three to four ounces of water for a child, that will certainly help. You can just try that once in the morning. And let's see, if it works, great. If it doesn't after a week or two, we can get rid of it. If it makes the pain worse, it's a very good indicator. Lack of uh, acid buffers and And again, the electrolytes will help with that. Pinch of sea salt. Pinch of sea salt could do wonders. Make sure we're adding that to the food. And one more recommendation. Turmeric seems to work great for this specifically. So this is one of those times, you know, I don't recommend turmeric a lot because turmeric is one of those things that's just kind of like the panacea we've talked about lately, but actually panacea, uh, panacea, yes. But actually in this case, it can work tremendously well. Start at a smaller dosage, one to two grams a day for a child, work up to maybe two to three grams. It depends on the child's weight. An adult dosage would be about three to four grams per day to get a clinical benefit. You could take that at breakfast and dinner. That would work fine. Use a product that contains curcumin phytosome, which is fat bound, or you can take it as a powder in a smoothie. You could take it as capsules if it has the black pepper in it, the pepperine, but just make sure you get an absorbable form is basically what I'm trying to say. That's worked tremendously as well. That may take a little longer. That might take a couple weeks to actually see if you're getting a clinical benefit. So hopefully this helps and um, your friend should thank you, Lisa, because you're a great friend asking that question for them. Thank you everyone for tuning into this weekend's Cabral House Calls. And we actually finished at the same exact time as yesterday. Uncanny, 28 minutes and 40 seconds without that being planned. It's serendipity. So thank you once again for tuning into the Cabral Concept. Can't wait to bring you another Mindset and Motivation Monday on the Cabral Concept. Take care, everyone. Before you go, I wanted to share a personal story with you. The real reason I began to get well finally is because I figured out what was wrong with me. And that might seem pretty obvious, but I went from doctor to doctor for over two years before discovering at-home functional medicine lab testing. 
These are the labs that enabled me to finally figure out what was wrong with my hormones, blood sugar, electrolytes, and gut health. And once I knew what was wrong, I could then follow a proven plan in order to rebalance my body from the inside out. This is why I believe so strongly in functional medicine lab testing and why I've made it my mission to share these labs with the world. Now at equa.life, you can order an at-home lab test or a lab bundle for you and your family and be able to complete it within the week. Plus, the Equal Life difference is that you're not left to try to read and figure out these labs on your own. We explain what your lab numbers mean, what they mean in the much bigger picture, and then how to go about rebalancing your body in order to heal. To see our full selection of lab tests or to set up a free lab selection call to find out what labs may be best for you, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. And do remember, we ship these all over the world. To find out more and to set up your free lab selection call, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. That's E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E forward slash labs. 